Hello everybody and welcome to the Brog. We're on uh, episode 78 now. You re may remember that uh, I'm your host, Adam Josh. And if you're noticing anything different uh, about me, I got a new sweater. Uh, what I wanted to talk about today was the header of my website, uh, adamjosh.com. .com. It says, uh, side with the truth and you'll always be right. And I'd like to, if I could, save you some grief and save you years of your life if you're one of those people who search for the truth and want to find answers to questions like who we are, where are we going, what are we doing, what's all this about, what about God and religion and all that. And uh, I'd like to save you grief if I could. I'm sort of talking to myself 10 years ago. And if I seem a little bit tired, it's because it's uh, pretty late and I wanted to get this done. And I've been having some technical difficulties. Speaking of that, for future fun reference, Here's the new camera that I got, and while I'm recording the brog, I can record this as well. So I'm recording the brog, episode 78 right now. I'm recording myself, recording myself in HD nonetheless. So, uh, we could have two cameras. You know, like one over there and one over here. No, we're not, we're not gonna do that. It's, it's gonna take too much time, time to edit all that. What I wanted to talk about today was siding with the truth, and you'll always be right. And I have some analogies. I spent uh, about an hour reading about 30 pages on uh, the Wright brothers and their uh, inventions that I thought I could use as an analogy. But uh, I found in my own life that there's been uh, a few handful of times, a handful of times that I've thought that I was in the right um, in regards to say like religion or politics or something and you feel like I'm in my corner and I know what I'm talking about and then you have like the ground uh, pulled out from underneath you and maybe it was naive and of course it was and a little bit arrogant of me to think that you know I could stand in my corner and have everything mapped out and figure it all out uh, and to think like that is sort of arrogant and uh, was childish and um, some people need to grow, th go through that to mature their souls and to grow. And if I could, I would save you some grief. So I'll talk to the camera like I'm talking to my 17-year-old self and try to save myself some time of having to learn things the hard way. But, you know, a quick bad example that I've already done once but then deleted after I recorded it was some people say there's no definitive type truth and when we get into talking about truth we sort of have to define our terms and uh, address the topic of speaking in definites You know, when you're talking about the truth, your statements and your definitives and uh, reality and all that sort of come into play. Am I wearing glasses? Uh, the answer to that question right now is no, I'm not wearing glasses. If somebody were to ask me, did you wear glasses today? The truth of that is yes. Is Adam wearing glasses right now? The answer is no. 
and if I you know put them back on and ask the same question the ultimate truth is I am wearing glasses right now on my face you see my point is that there are definite truths but taking the greater consideration time affects and our perception of time affects uh, what truth can be sometimes. You know, the Wright brothers, Orville and Wilbur, uh, were two Americans credited with inventing and building the world's first successful airplane and making the first controlled, powered, sustained, heavier than air human flight on December 17th, 1900, in uh, 1903. In the two years afterwards, the brothers developed their flying machine into the first practical fixed-wing aircraft. Although not the first to build and fly experimental aircraft, the Wright brothers were first to invent aircraft controls that made fixed-wing powered flight possible. And as you read on here, you can look this up on Wikipedia, you know, after they had sort of got their invention to what they thought was a testable and viable invention they sort of went sort of reclusive and then started uh, going into court cases and patent uh, problems and lawyers and the other people saying that uh, that they had invented it and there's a whole big controversy so competing claims First flight claims are made for Adder, Whitehead, Pierce, and Jatho for their variously documented tests in years prior to and including 1903. So, my analogy here in this whole context is if you had the time I would say to read that, but um, if you side with the truth you'll always be right, is my point. And if we apply it to this scenario, if somebody asks you, you know, did the Wright brothers invent flight? The obvious answer to that is no. Birds were flying, and uh, a lot of things were flying before the Wright brothers invented their invention. So the Wright brothers didn't invent flight. That might be sort of semantical, but uh, and other people uh, around the world were working on the same type of invention and uh, gliders, of course, before that. But so. They weren't, the Wright brothers weren't the only one working on uh, fixed wing flight. Um, we live in a culture where the pa we can sort of rewrite the past as we go along. And so when people think of the Wright brothers, they think, oh, well, they invented uh, aviation or they invented the airplane as we know it. Um, but if you sort of start scratching the surface of that simple statement, you realize that there was competing claims and that there was other people working on it at the same time. So when you start digging for truth, you find that sometimes there's more questions than answers. So here I was, you know, 10 years ago and the mistakes I've made uh, in the past. I know the truth. The Wright brothers invented flight. The Wright brothers, you know, and that can be a really arrogant, ignorant statement as well. The Wright brothers invented flight. Well, obviously they didn't invent the concept of flight. They didn't invent birds flying. Uh, the Wright brothers invented the airplane. You know, all of that, even back then, 100 years ago, is, was up for debate. And other people uh, were credited for the invention of the modern day airplane and all that. So, and you could see that, like reading their story, that they were sort of interested in, in money and uh, if they were sort of in, if they were interested in the the idea of creating a, a plane you know in itself that worked then they wouldn't have been so preoccupied with their patent lawyer and uh, been so secretive as to protect other people from getting their patents because coming from an artistic standpoint like some people want to make art and some people want to profit from their art and some people are um, out to make or generate profits or make intending to make profits from their inventions and other people want to invent things for the sake of inventing them and money and profiting from them is sort of a secondary thing. That brings Tesla to mind. 
you know, people think of like how bad it is with the psychopathic geo elites repressing us technologically and how far ahead we are in advanced Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, Northrop Grumman type things or secret uh, projects, black projects, what the, you know, secret militaries and secret governments are doing on this world and off the world. Tesla, a hundred years ago, had a vision and the ability and the technological know-how to create wireless or to tap into wireless free energy for the whole world. And of course, JP Morgan and the people who supplied copper and the wiring and uh, were selling their uh, wiring and, and uh, selling energy to whole cities and people groups didn't see that uh, as much of a lucrative investment. So we're not being held back technologically uh, in a in a thirty year type way. Like on record, Tesla, the same person who invented alternating current, that is, you know, we're harnessing power from Niagara Falls right now and powering this computer and all that. That same gentleman, Tesla, invented wireless technology to harness electricity out of the ether, out of the ionosphere. And a hundred years ago, his vision could have been realized if it wasn't for people who were more interested in profit than in uh, inventions that would better humanity. So when people ask sort of like how bad it, it is, it's, it's that bad. It's, we've been held back as, a, as a, a, the bulk of humanity a uh, hundred years that's like documented in the case of energy. And I think everybody realizes that fossil fuels are sort of uh, the old world orders uh, modus operandi and uh, we're so far beyond needing that but it's like true you have to let go of these old ways and we have to do it as a people group but um, there's people in advanced uh, skunk works divisions or ad uh, advanced uh, secret underground bunkers that are I would, I would say, obviously, at least 100 years ahead, right? Because of Tesla's invention. Tesla was 100 years ahead of his time. Um, I would say that they're so far advanced that it's a breakaway civilization. And uh, I, the mind, I can't even fathom the, the, uh, the things that we have. So as far as when you're talking about the truth of these matters of... Uh, in this ocean of possibility and ocean of information it's best to say I side with whatever the truth is and uh, if you side with the truth you take out the ego and the pride out of it which sort of can confuse people because what's big on our continent and through the southern United States and from what I understand of most of the states is uh, left and right, Coke and Pepsi, and your football team versus my football team, <laughs> pardon me, and uh, this dichotomy of like this versus the other thing, and uh, siding with whatever the truth is, uh, is sort of saying, or admitting that both sides can be wrong, our earth isn't a square, it's circular, and politics and religion and truth sometimes can be fluid. And uh, if you side with the truth in that sense, you'll always be right. Uh, there was people at one point on this same planet who were convinced that the earth was flat. So if somebody had come along at that time and said to them, the earth is spherical, uh, the whole argument could have been avoided and people could have been uh, not murdered <laughs> for their heretical beliefs. If, uh, if people could have agreed to just side with whatever the truth is. So you say that the earth is flat and I say that it's spherical or round. And uh, if I said, hey man, I side with the truth. And whatever the truth is, that's, that's the truth. That's right. Then a lot of uh, things could have been avoided. If somebody had come along and said, um, there's no way that man will ever fly like birds if they came along, you know, 
in uh, 1850 and said that to the to uh, the Wright brothers' father. Um, is that the truth that no man will ever fly? They might have thought that at the time, but you one two skip a few, and the truth is that the Wright brothers uh, logged a ton of hours in the air on their invention. So the truth in that sense changed, I guess. At one point the truth was that there, it didn't seem possible, but I guess the ultimate truth was that uh, it's possible for man to fly in an airplane type situation. So if you sided with the truth, you'd say, well, I don't know, right now it doesn't seem possible, but I'm not ruling it out of the question. So, side with the truth and you'll always be right is my point. And uh, some things we don't know. Uh, you can tell throughout the course of your life from, you know, this tiny speck to whatever size you are now that you've been gathering information and learning. And you have to admit that if we could collect all the information that's on planet Earth, written in history books and written down, and compare that to all the information that's available in our universe and if there's any other universes that we would be we would know a speck of sand in a sea of sand or in an ocean uh, in comparison to what there is to know so our understanding is limited and we see sort of in part and know in part so I find that to avoid any pitfalls or massive cases of disillusionment and the depression that follow with it can be avoided if you swallow the pride originally and just say I side with whatever the truth is and if that's the truth then that's the truth and I want to know the truth of the matter so I encourage people watching this to side with the truth and you'll always be right. And I have other examples that I could tell you, but uh, I think I'm going to go to bed now. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next vlog.